So hello everyone and welcome to a, another um, interview, this time with a teacher and coach trainer, academic coach uh, Gretchen Wegner, who is coaching students, right, from all works, all kinds of subjects and trains coaches who want to specify in uh, academic coaching. So a very exciting thing. And uh, I've been reading um, Gretchen's uh, newsletters and watching her videos, and I found it very exciting and very relatable for language teachers. So this is the connection that we have. Um, could you please say a few words about yourself, please? And thanks for coming. <laughs> yeah, so um, for the, the academic coaching, which I do with students and which I teach coaches how to do academic coaching, uh, is really all about figuring out, you know, how is the brain working across all subjects? What's working? What's not working? How are habits and systems related to time management, organization, study skills, and self-advocacy? How does that affect a student's ability to learn and learn joyfully and produce work <laughs> in their classes? So. Wow, that sounds very complex, but also so very logical. I mean, that should be the first step, shouldn't it, when people start going to school, that, to learn all these things? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's have a look at the first question, okay, that we have coming up, which is basically how you started out to become a coach. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah, I was a teacher. I actually spent most of my uh, 20s going back to school so I could become a teacher. Then I was a teacher only for about three years and I hated it, a classroom teacher. I mean, I loved it, but I was angry all the time and I didn't like making students do things they didn't want to do. And mm. I ended up not quite getting fired, but this was a private school and they didn't recontract me for the next year. And so I just applied for a bunch of tutoring jobs and I got something called academic coaching and I didn't know what it was, but I was hired for, to do it. And I actually had to start an academic coaching program at a school. And uh, I just, it turned out that it's exactly what I was meant to do. The reason I was angry all the time as a teacher is I didn't find the subjects I was teaching as relevant as teaching kids how their brains work and how they learn. And to be able to do that and to be able to make it relevant to them and to do it one-on-one -on -one was so exciting for me. So, mm. you know, slowly my own business built and then I created this thing called the anti-boring approach to powerful studying, which just kind of rose out of me. And then people asked me to, educators asked me to train them. <laughs> so it just tumbled after that. I was just watching a motivational video the other day where somebody got fired and that led to them growing their own business. And it's exactly what happened for you in a way, obviously not being fired, but you know, just transitioning yeah. in a faster track than you would yeah. have. Exactly. I'm grateful now, but I wasn't grateful then. <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah. Okay. And, and how, how are you with the term coach? So are you comfortable with that? Do you think it's important to be called a coach and not a trainer or facilitator, for example? Well, yeah, because primarily with, with students, I don't consider I train or facilitate them. With them, I really am. I mean, I, I coined for myself the phrase academic life coach. I didn't realize there were other people using that phrase. And for me, that was helpful because it meant that we were looking at their academics and we were looking at their life habits and goals and seeing how the two relate and how messiness in one area created messiness in the other. And then also how healing in one area would create healing in the other area as well. So I, I definitely see coach or even mentor is more what I think I am, but coach yeah. is a good group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that that actually um, means that you do get into very deep stuff, right? So it's not just about, okay, did you do your homework? Right. It often starts there, but then where that goes about if they didn't, why? Mm -hmm. And even if they did, why? Did you, are you really good at doing your homework all the time just because you want to please your mom and dad and teachers, but you actually don't have a sense of your own control and agency and empowerment or maybe you do and maybe that's why you did your homework and if you didn't do your homework what what got in the way i mean it it yes it can get deep very fast <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just being able to ask the right questions right yeah 
Yeah, so that's that's the key to all coaching and a lot of other things, obviously, but getting the question right is quite critical. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, okay, thank you. Let's have a look at the second question, okay? So in broader terms, in, in education, is there anything that you've noticed? Yeah, I mean, what I would say, there's so many ways to answer this question, right? And the way when I was taking notes before this conversation, it was fun for me to make a list of all the conversations that I see people are starting to have now that they didn't used to have. Now, not all these calls have made it into schools, but definitely in my corner of the universe that's peripheral to schools, what I'm seeing is people are talking a lot more about the brain. I mean, that's what I'm doing. Um, people are talking a lot more about trauma and the nervous system. So that's really interesting. And self-regulation is a term that is coming up more and more and more, at least in the coaching and executive function world. And then speaking of executive function, that's a phrase that people are understanding more and more and that some schools are starting to train their teachers in what executive function means and why that's important for teachers to understand. Could you explain very briefly what that means? Sorry. Yeah. Executive functions it's, um, are skills that are controlled in um, like the, the last part of our brain to mature <laughs> in our prefrontal cortex right here. Yeah. And, yeah. They, and they are skills related to being able to think into the future, being able to break something in the future down into smaller steps, being able to initiate a task, sustain a task, end a task. And often a student who, for example, is not turning in their homework is a student who struggles in some area with executive function. And so understanding that it's not a moral failure that he or she didn't do their homework, but really rather that they, they have a weak muscle in one or more areas and that we're trying to strengthen that muscle. Okay. Um, so it's, yeah. it's basically it's connected to planning. I've, I've listened to a, to a few talks related to that, being able to plan ahead and being able to physically even go through, so miming what you're going to be doing, those kind of things can strengthen yeah. it, right? Yeah. Exactly. And being able to notice what's happening and to be able to adjust your behavior, like notice, am I getting, am I actually taking the actions I need to or not? <laughs> How do I switch tasks if I notice I'm not? All of those are a set of what they call executive skills. Right, okay. And I think one of the key functions of any academic or, you know, learning-centered coach would be to create a, a, a huge amount of awareness because that's the first step, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Uh -huh. Exactly. Okay. To, be aware, to be aware of what skills you're not good at yet and what skills you are good at. And right. then to be aware of how to build those skills and watching yourself grow and then awareness, how to assess your growth. So you know what you need to work on and what right. you don't need to work on anymore. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And what, what's missing in education at the moment? So just coming back to this question. So is, is this being addressed? Are there right approaches or what's happening? Well, it's such an interesting question in the context of COVID, right? Which is when Correct. we're doing this because um, I mean there's just so much that's broken in our education system so in some ways I feel a little overwhelmed answering that question what's missing sure. uh, there there is a lot being asked of students executive functions more than when I was in school and when I was students age given the um, the amount of information we process on a daily basis the amount of distractions we have on a daily basis and now especially with COVID the amount of stress that has escalated because stress really impacts our executive functions. Sure. Um, all of that means, uh, I mean, I, I think, I think our system, our system is one where everyone, teachers, students, and parents have to perpetually work harder and harder and harder and harder to try and just do what we did with a lot more calm back in the day. And that wasn't great education either when I was in school, but at least there wasn't this, this, like, I don't even know constant, what to call it. Constant vibration or, I don't know, tension. Yeah. Which is kind yeah. of yeah. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I, I get and that. Then, absolutely. And then what it creates is this separation where kids and parents and teachers and even workers, we all are being more and more separated from our deep sense of knowing who we are because we're trying mm -hmm. to keep up and we're trying to fit in and stay in the system, whatever the system is. Um, and 
and so we're further and further disconnected from from ourselves and i would say we're seeing that happening across politics right now too where more and more leaders are coming in who who, who actually embody that disconnection from basic human values i won't say more than that i will say i'm in america <laughs> yes yeah, yeah, yeah. no, no, yeah. um i think it's also this this growth of expectations at so many levels which is also impacting very heavily on young learners from the age of five or six you know they're, they're virtually expected to go to school having the skills to you know count to 20 kind of be aware of their abc you know already when like 20 30 years ago that was not expected at all right. so it's already at that level and then that just starts growing right right yeah. right okay let's go on to the next question now and this is the last one do you have any kind of message or specific tips, ideas towards teachers, trainers nowadays? Yeah, there are maybe two or three ways I can address this question quickly. The first is, I mean, I've noticed, I, I've, I've learned that my skill and my brilliance that I bring to this field is an obsession with figuring out what is the least teachers and students and parents need to know that create maximum effect. Mm. And let's stop trying to cram everything in and teach everything. But what's the least people need to know that allows them to take action and have agency in their lives. Okay. And to that mm -hmm. end, I know it's small because we're sharing our screen, but I've consolidated my understanding of brain theory and the science of learning into like three simple steps that if students and teachers and parents understand it they actually then are able to rethink the way they study and learn and teach and i call it the study cycle so that's um so one message is no matter who you are to to figure out that out for yourself. What is the least that your students need to know? And then make sure that that is the center of everything you do. And for me, brain science, the science of learning and the study cycle is the center. So I guess I would also say that I think everybody should know the study cycle and be able to apply it to, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. to their teaching and learning um, because mm -hmm. it, it's, like, it's like having an owner's manual to who who you are as a human brain, how it works in the world, and uh, how mm -hmm. to maximize maximize your processes in order to have what you want. If and if that's good grades and to learn your stuff effectively, then you can have that if you practice the study cycle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when you're coaching, you're basically, or when you're teaching trainers then you're actually helping them to apply this on a daily basis, right? Or, or yes. how to get yes. to. Yes. And that would be another message that I have, especially since I know we're talking to, to coaches and teachers, is be willing to apply everything you teach students, be willing to apply it in your own life first. So mm -hmm. like in my course, which is called The Art of Inspiring Students to Study Strategically, the study cycle is the first thing I teach. And in fact, there is a free course on my website about the study cycle because I think it's so important. I want everyone to have it. So I cool. teach that. And then everything else that I teach from note taking to studying for tests to making a study plan to mm -hmm. time management and organization, all of it is centered around the three steps of the study cycle. Okay. Um, so that way people's muscles are very strong <laughs> by the time they're done working through the course, especially if they're willing to apply what I'm teaching to their own lives first, like practice the note-taking skills that I teach. Because then if you do that, you will notice your own desire not to do what I ask you to do. And mm -hmm. that is crucial. I see so many teachers being like, oh, I didn't wanna do what you just asked. And then it's like, great. Now you have empathy for your students, whereas before you used to complain that your students didn't do what you asked. Now you see that you have your own resistance to putting in effort. And why is that? Because the brain and the study cycle teaches us we resist effort as human beings. We just do. Well, it's, it's a basic, very, very physical thing, isn't it? So we only want to do what we need to do. We don't want to do exert more energy because that, you know, then you have to consume energy also to. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. So instead of, you know, 
bodybuilding it's like brain building isn't it in a way mm -hmm. yeah. it okay. is okay. and the more you learn how to notice your desire not to put in more effort but find the next tiniest thing that you might be willing to do before you give up the more you do that the stronger your muscle becomes and then soon mm -hmm. you're just naturally putting in the effort that you need to put in to learn okay. whatever you're okay. learning uh, the, way, the way I approach that is you know moving out of your comfort zone but not moving into the panic zone but being in that you know, in between learning zone, which is, right. which is kind of okay. Right. Okay yeah. So right. acceptable. Right. And what I find is many educators are not in touch with that zone in themselves because mm -hmm. they have naturally have expertise about what they're teaching. And so they lack, and this, many people may feel defensive when I say this, but I'm going to say it anyway, they end up lacking empathy for students' difficulties, and they end up not breaking some things down into small enough chunks for students to truly be able to handle without going into that panic zone. Right. Uh, and I'm seeing that more and more and more, especially in, um, in the distance learning that we're doing uh -huh. because of COVID. Right now, teachers are requiring more and more of students, and their brains are exploding because they just yeah. can't keep up with it all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so this is an, this a uh, uh, really uh, an issue that needs to be addressed more and more, especially as the, uh, as there's more distance learning, mm -hmm. and teachers are finding it more and more difficult to to break down things so that they really are digestible chunks of of learning. You know, yeah. small bit of time, right? Okay, okay. Thanks very much for that. And uh, finally, um, just to kind of summarize. I think we're both on the same track with this whole thing. So it's about building awareness, helping people stay in that learning zone and be um, comfortable or accepting that a little bit of extra effort will, will go a very long way. Is that kind of what I think? That is. Yes. Yes. And effort that is well-placed effort. So the study cycle talks about like the three different tasks that you want to cycle through and you want to put effort into each of those areas. So it's not random effort. It's not just like, we're going to work harder now, but it's like, <laughs> okay, what am I going to do to encode in a new way? Or wait, is it time for me to practice retrieval? Then that's what I'm going to put some more effort into right okay. now and to be smart about it. And I call my approach the anti-boring approach because you're looking for things that are as fun as possible, or at least anti-boring to encourage you to do sure. it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, thank you very much for joining us. And hopefully um, listeners, viewers are taking away a few new ideas, new approaches to how you can be handling your learners difficulties. And uh, you can apply everything that Gretchen has said to yourselves, of course, and do check out her website, GretchenWagner.com. And thank you very much for being here. And it was very delightful. And uh, hopefully, if you want to go on uh, on this path, then you can check in with um, Gretchen. If you're specifically looking at language coaching, then do join our programs at the International Language Coaching Association. There's our website. So do join us. And uh, Thanks for watching us and do watch other bits of this series. And thank you very much for being here. Okay. And that's the end. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So I've stopped the recording. So that's it. So I think it was brilliant. It was really good. It was nice and compact and fun. And I really enjoyed it. <laughs> was, I, was I talking too much? Not, not so much, right? It was more I you. I think so, yeah. Okay. I tried to be careful, but <laughs> sometimes I get carried away. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know. what. I hear you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, okay. Thank you very much then. I know that we've got a, a 30 minute slot. So um, I'm going to send you the link, okay? And uh, I don't know if you want to share perhaps in your, I don't know, newsletter or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's totally up to you, all right? Okay. Uh, okay. Do you want to stop? Yes.